So uh, this is, I think, the first of the projectile motion question in your homework set, and I thought it would be a good one to go over. So um, we'll start out with this because it um, it is a little bit easier than other questions, and it's a good question to model um, how you should approach projectile motion questions. So it says a uh, marble rolls of a uh, tabletop one some height and hits the floor at a point some distance away from the table's edge um, in the horizontal direction. Oh, I see, so it's describing the distance away. Um, and it asks a bunch of questions. So let me, um, so after having read the question, depending on the people, the question might immediately make sense, might not. For me, in most of the cases, I find it useful to diagram the situation so that I have some concrete, guide, um, concrete um, mental image that I can form. So let me start out with this tabletop that is some height high. So I have a tabletop that's of some height h. I'm going to use letters to indicate the quantities so that I can plug in the numbers at the very end. So I have a marble ball here, which um, it says it rolls off and doesn't give me any angles, but most the tables top, most the tabletops are horizontal. So I'm going to assume it's a uh, rolling off horizontally. And uh, I can imagine what kind of trajectory this marble will uh, follow. It will follow something that looks like a half of a parabola. And that gives me where, that gives me a reference point for illustrating, oops, sorry. It's hard to draw straight lines. Reference point for illustrating uh, this distance here. Let me label this as D, and it's a distance away from the table's edge in the horizontal direction. So it's this distance that the problem is giving us. Um, okay, uh, I feel like I'm missing some information. Let me just label them so that um, so that I at least confirm to myself that this information is necessary for complete description of this physical situation. So the main missing information here is the initial velocity of the marble. Uh, I feel like I need to know that to kind of mentally connect how far away the marble will land with, um, with everything. And uh, this initial velocity isn't given anywhere in the question, but I do notice now that that is one of the questions that they are asking me. What is the speed of the marble when it leaves the table's edge? So, okay, so I'll get to that eventually. So uh, with every, um, well, every physics question, but especially projectile motion question, you want to take this a little bit of time uh, uh, diagramming out the situation that you're given so that you have a concrete mental image. You're not just uh, hunting for formulas to plug in numbers in which Easy is the questions, they will work, but anything other than easy is the questions, it, it won't work. So, okay, so now I'm ready to actually do the problems. It asks, how long is the marble in the air? Um, well, so with the projectile motion question, the starting point, good starting point, is to think of the motion along the two perpendicular directions, horizontal and the vertical directions. And sometimes the information you are looking for, it'll be easiest to find in one direction rather than the other. Uh, sometimes you will need to use information in the both the directions together. So for this question of how long is the marble in the air, in the horizontal direction, I don't feel like I have anything. In fact, I don't even have initial velocity. So there's a lot of missing blanks in the horizontal direction. So my first instinct is to use the 
vertical direction motion to try to figure out this part of the question. So once you pick the direction that you decide will be most useful, then you can treat it like a 1D kinematics question. So I look at the kinematics equations in the y direction. So uh, let me just write down a few equations that I do remember. I have the position as a function of time that's going to be um, that's going to be initial y position plus initial y velocity times time. And it's uh, um, in the most general form, plus one half acceleration times time squared. In this particular case, I know the acceleration. The acceleration is downward at minus g. So let me plug that in right from the start. So the acceleration part of the motion is minus one half gt squared. Okay, and if you look at the hints for this question, I think one of them is about what uh, is there um, uh, velocity in the y component initially, and uh, you can see here that there's uh, all the velocities in the horizontal direction at the very beginning. So that simplifies this question quite a bit. We can say zero initial velocity in the y direction. So, uh, so zero for that term. So you have the initial y position to deal with. That's given by the height here. So let me plug that in. Initial y position is h. And um, I look at this equation. I look at this equation, I have one equation and um, I have one unknown time. That's what I'm looking for. And um, I'll need to know the y position y. This is uh, the part of the question where you have to, where it helps to have uh, visualized through the problem. So this marble is going to leave the tabletop and it's uh, in the air as long as or until it hits the ground here. So really the y position here is the position of the marble when it hits the ground. That uh, it's a time when time of the moment when the marble hits the ground is what you're looking for. So there you say the y position is zero. Oh, I guess I implicitly said that my um, y is equal to zero at this level when I said that my initial height is h. Um, <laughs> it's kind of natural choice, but it helps to make it explicit. So let me uh, reflect that here. So this y position here should be zero. Now I have a complete equation in which I can simply solve for time t. So let me first write down the simplified version. So the simplified version is zero is equal to h minus one half g t squared. So go through a little bit of algebra, move one half g t squared over to the other side. One half g t squared is equal to h. Now we solve for t by multiplying through both sides by two over g. I'm trying to cancel out uh, one half g from the left-hand side. And then I'm going to take the square root. So this will get canceled out. And when I take the square root, the square root will cancel out uh, power of two there. So I get my answer, t is equal to square root of 2h over g. And um, we can plug then, um, we can now plug numbers into calculator. So, oops, I was playing with this earlier. Um, 
So uh, let me put in two times the height. I have 1.05 and I'm making sure all my units are in as a base SI units divided by G 9.8 equals and then take the square root. So the marble is uh, in the air for 0. Point, I think it was 46, 0. 0.46 seconds, two decimal points. Okay, so that's the answer for the time. Um, and it'll turn out that this answer will actually be useful when we are answering part B. So this is one of the reasons to keep your work organized as you're working through a multi-part multi physics question because there's a good chance that you'll use the information that you just worked through. Um, okay, so let's move on to part B. What is the speed of the marble when it leaves the table's edge? Um, so that's uh, asking for this unknown that I identified earlier when I was uh, sketching out what the situation looks like. Um, so we are, I guess, coming back to the X position uh, or the horizontal component of the motion where I initially said, uh, I don't feel like I have enough information. Um, but maybe now that we have found how long of a time it takes for the marble to get to this position, Maybe I have enough information. So here's one thing I do know about the horizontal motion in the, um, in the projectile motion. So in uh, projectile motion, we do have this, which simplifies our description quite a bit. The horizontal component of acceleration is zero. So that makes all of our kinematics equations quite a bit simpler. So uh, one of the simplified kinematics equations that you will have is the x position is equal to initial x position plus the initial velocity times time. Normally there would be acceleration term here, but since there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction, that's zero. So looking at this equation here, now I see that uh, with the time that I have from part A, I have enough information to work out my initial velocity V naught. Um, so I'm just gonna say the X position initially is equal to zero, just make things easier for myself. So this is zero. Then from having worked out this particular point in the marble's trajectory, I have the X position at that particular point, that's D, and I now have time. So I can plug those into, um, have an equation where the only unknown is V naught and I can solve for V naught. So um, the simplified equation looks like the X position, the moment the marble strikes the ground is equal to V naught, that's my unknown, I need to solve for that. and I plug in the value of t from earlier times the square root of 2h over g. So solving for v naught, I get v naught is equal to d times square root of g over 2h, um, or the reciprocal of the time. So, all right, that, um, that, um, that seems good. And uh, I have my calculator where I didn't erase the number I got. So I can uh, use that, I think. Can I? Uh, uh, well, it seems a little bit too complicated. So <laughs> I'll just uh, remember the number 0 0.4629. I keep, so for intermediate calculations, you do want to keep a few extra uh, significant figures to, uh, to ward off any rounding errors. So I have 3.9 divided by 0 0.4629. So 3.9 divided by 
So 8.43 meters per second is the 8.43 meters per second is the um, or the initial speed of the marble as it's leaving the table's edge. Um, part C. Um, all right. So, um, uh, by the way, any questions? I guess I should have paused for some questions. No questions? Okay, so let me move on to part C. Uh, so part C asks, uh, uh, what is its speed when it hits the floor? So um, what it's asking for is when it hits the floor, that's this point. So it's asking for what is its velocity as it hits the floor. Uh, or what is the magnitude of its velocity? So with the projectile motion, um, you should be in the habit of always thinking of motion um, in the x direction, oh, sorry, uh, motion in the x direction and in the y direction. Uh, think of that separately. So for the x component of this velocity, uh, I hope you Realize, the, realize from earlier discussion that the x component is just going to be the initial velocity that we had earlier. So to calculate the magnitude, we are going to need to know the um, x and y component in order to be able to reduce the Pythagorean theorem of vx squared plus vy squared. Square rooted is what gives us the speed. So I need to figure out what the y component of the velocity is. So, um, all right, I think uh, we should go back to something that we are considering in part A earlier, kinematics equations in y direction. So I wrote down one, the one involving position that uh, worked out, so I didn't need to write down anymore. But there are other kinematics equations, especially the one involving velocity. One that says the velocity at any later time is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So here I use the acceleration of minus g. So minus g times time. So so that's the equation I need. I'm going to reuse the time that we figured out earlier. So let me write out part C. So for part C, the y component of velocity when the marble hits the ground will be initial velocity. The y component is zero, so good. Minus g times time times square root of 2h over g. And I can actually simplify this a little bit because I can think of this g as square root of g squared. So this g has two, this has two factors of g under square root that cancels out one of the factors. So that gives me the y component of square root of two gh. So that's the y component of velocity. Um, I um, add that with this x component of the velocity. Um, under the square root and see what the answer is. Let's see, I wonder if, uh, if I do it algebraically, it'll simplify anything. Um, I, I don't think it makes anything simpler. So let me just work out the numerical value of uh, this uh, y component and I'll just uh, uh, do the Pythagorean theorem numerically. Uh, um, um, yeah, <laughs> so uh, let me, put in square root of 2gh um, to see what that gives me. I kind of want to, yeah. So 2 times g, 9.8, times the height, um, 1.05 square rooted. So when the ball hits the ground, it has y component of velocity of 4.54. 4.54 meters per second. And looking back at the history, um, the x component, I want to keep at least to one more digit uh, so that um, 
Um, so, so, so that um, I can run, ward off any rounding errors. So 8.425. So 8.425 meters per second. And uh, I guess if I'm keeping extra digits, then it should be 537. Um, um, now, this isn't the answer that the question is asking. Question is asking for the magnitude of velocity. So I need to um, use Pythagorean theorem to calculate what that is. So V is a square root of V X squared plus V Y squared, or plug doing that on the calculator. Um, I have 8 point, um, four to five squared plus, I think I can um, yeah, do this in one shot for first part of it, 5.7 squared. Okay, let me put uh, press equal to say that's one result. So that's the sum of the squares and I take the square root for 9.57, 9.57 meters per second. So um, for this one question, let me plug these answers into the system to, um, to make sure that the answers are correct. It will be a little bit embarrassing if the answers are somehow not. Um, so let me go to the homework uh, in the preview mode and uh, make sure that it says it's actually correct. Um, so now, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to do this, um, uh, enter it into the actual MyApple Math system, is I wanted to illustrate one kind of feature that's newish in the new style um, thing that you have in your class, is uh, you can enter each part step by step. So for time, I, so I can just put in uh, 0 0.46 for time. And because I'm leaving the other two answer boxes blank, the system will know I'm only attempting the first part and it'll just score that and it'll tell me it's correct. So this can serve as a kind of way for you to know that, um, that what you're doing is correct. Um, because particularly for a question like this one, because parts B and C does depend on your getting part A right. So let me put in the rest uh, 8.43 and 9.57. And by the way, remember that for you, the, these randomly generated numbers are probably different or so. Uh, so don't just uh, copy and paste these <laughs> answers. So that's it. Um, so this is kind of um, uh, um, model, a, a projectile motion question that I'm hoping will serve as a model of how you approach these projectile motion questions.